Hmm. Finally finished. Hmm? Huh, good timing. Hey Jason, what's up? Nothing much, just getting ready to play some Overwatch. Want to join for a few rounds? Sounds good, but kind of in a groove with some code I'm working on. Oh uh, yeah? What are you working on? Eh, you know me. Just another prototype that I'll probably never finish. Want to take a look? Sure, I've got time. Awesome, cool. Let me just uh, share my screen. All right, so the concept is simple. I created a room with some interactable objects like this lamp. To interact with it, you have to look at it, click your mouse, and voila, turns off. Click it again, and turns back on. So far, I've only implemented this lamp, a radio, and this door but I'm hoping to add a whole bunch more. Nice. Then I want to use them to create puzzles in some sort of first person mystery game. That sounds pretty cool. Shouldn't be too hard either. It'll definitely uh, make for some good practice. I hope so, but I'm already starting to feel overwhelmed. Already after just three objects? What's the problem? Well, I want to add more, but the code gets more complicated with every object that I add. Hmm, really? Mind if I have a look? Sure. So all of the interactions are driven by the player class. You can see here in the update method that it finds the nearest game object, which is based on the player's view, and checks for fire one input. Then it searches the game object for each of the interactable object scripts that I've already implemented and calls their respective interaction methods. Hmm. Well, I can definitely see why you're overwhelmed. You're going to need to add additional checks for each one of those interactable objects that you add. At this rate, your player class is going to be huge. It's just going to be a monolith. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Funnily enough, though, that's not even why I'm overwhelmed. I've been reasoning through all my options, and honestly, I can't decide which approach to take to solve this problem. Classic analysis paralysis. We've all been there. Yep. I could bore you with all my research, but I'm curious. Do you have any thoughts? Well, let's break this in two. First, let's have a look at your requirements. Uh, you need to implement potentially endless numbers of interactable objects for your player. And your problem is that your code can't scale with that requirement. So at the moment, you're going to need to add new lines of code for every single item. I think you'd be better off making a contract. Hmm, contracts. You and Charles covered that in the stream this week, right? We did cover that in our stream. I didn't know you watched those. <laughs> yeah, they're a great way to start the week. So if I'm remembering correctly, you define an object's contract using an interface, right? Yep, that's right. Hmm, okay. It's funny, I've used interfaces before, but I never really thought about them like that, like a, like a contract or a promise to do some work. But it makes total sense. Well, believe it or not, that's how they're defined in Microsoft's own documentation. An interface defines a contract, and any class or struct that implements that contract must provide an implementation of the members defined in that interface. I should really start reading those. They do come in handy every now and then. Yeah, I bet. So to apply that to my situation, I just need to create an interface that each of my interactable objects can implement, and then have my player class's update method search for that instead, right? Mm-hmm, pretty much. And you've already got a good name for it, too. What's that? Interactable? Exactly. Clear, gets the point across. And all you need to do is create an interface called iInteractable with a method called interact. And in fact, I've got time now if you want to jump into it. Sure. All right, so I'll create a new interface I interactable and hey, why does everyone prepend their interfaces with an I? I've always done it out of habit, but I never really asked why. Honestly, it's just a convention that most developers use. You don't have to add the I, but it makes it easier to tell that you're referencing an interface at a glance. Wow, it's really that simple? <laughs> Who would have thought? Next, I'll add the interact method. And finally, Back in the player class, search for I interactable. And call dot interact instead. Nice. And don't forget to update your implementations too. Right. I'll have each one implement I interactable and move each of their behaviors into the interact method. And that should be it, right? Yep, nothing to wire up. So why don't we test it? Okay, I'll switch back to Unity, hit play, and...
Perfect. Everything still works. Cool. And now you can add as many new interactable objects as you want without turning your class into a monolith. That's awesome. In fact, now that you mention it, I do have one new interaction in mind, one that wouldn't have been possible before. Oh yeah, what is it? Let me show you. First, I'll make a new implementation of iInteractable called Composite Interaction. Oh, uh, I think I know where you're going with this one. Ha, huh, I bet you do. Basically, it'll have a list of interactable objects that it'll loop through when the player interacts with it. It'll be an easy way for me to group interactions up so I can trigger more than one. Looks good. All right, all I have to do now is wire it up. Press play. Awesome. Not bad, Barrels, not bad. <laughs> Thanks. And thank you for your help. Yeah, no problem. Now, here's the important thing. Now you have to save the project and go play Overwatch. All right, fair enough. Let me just wrap this up and I'll call you back when I'm in game. All right? Cool. Listen. See you then. A special thanks to my top supporters, Berkwas 3D, Dark Rush Photography, R-Star, Thomas, Trond, Yakub Al-Safari, and Iron Alex.